History was made on the Senate floor tonight. Find out what impact former Indiana State Governor had. And Muncie police have found a recent spike in heroin-related deaths. I'll tell you what the Muncie police chief had to say on the matter. Winter weather returns tomorrow with cold temperatures and snow. Newslink Indiana starts now. Live from the Ball State News Center, this is Newslink Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to Newslink Indiana. I'm Alex Kelmer. And I'm Val Jones. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, the 9th District Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco will hear arguments on whether President Trump's executive order, which temporarily banned immigration from refugee entry from seven Muslim-majority countries, will be kept suspended for now. Trump said that his order would, quote, keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. But his actions have caused protests both nationally and internationally. And the effects of the executive order can even be felt here in Muncie. Given the highlight on Muslim-majority countries, Newslink Indiana's Adam Chowdhury visited Islamic Center of Muncie to find out how people there felt about the ban. Here at the center, we spoke to Sami Bakdash, a Muncie physician who works at IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital. Born in Syria, one of the countries listed under the ban, Bakdash has a sister-in-law who was also on her way to Muncie. However, President Trump's ban scuppered her plans as she was packing her things in preparation for her move to Ball State University. She got very scared, uh, very intimidated, um, very, very fearful of what might happen to her. The president of the Islamic Center, Richard McKinney, gave his opinion on what effect it may have here in Muncie. The only thing I guess I worry about is that it, it, it might give people the sense of a free ticket to be more hateful towards the things that they don't understand. Uh, and are not willing to take the time to learn. A study from 2010 released by the Association of Statisticians of American Religious Bodies showed that Islam made up the largest non-Christian religious population in Indiana. Thanks to the ban being temporarily lifted, Baghdad's sister-in-law is now moving quickly to get into the country while she still can. In Muncie, Adam Chowdhury, Newsnick, Indiana. The appellate court in San Francisco began a hearing about the travel ban tonight at 6 p.m. local time. A court spokesman told the Associated Press a decision will likely come later this week. More news on the travel ban today. Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly spoke out about tra President Trump's travel ban in a hearing before the House committee. Here's what he had to say. This is not a Muslim ban. If we had put countries on, predominantly Muslim countries, on this pause list, my view that would be putting them on there because they're Muslims. But because they're not, the reason they're not on there is we have reasonable trust in their systems that we can rely on to begin the vetting. Of the 51 Muslim countries on earth, um, predominantly Muslim countries, seven uh, from that list are on, are on the pause list, but not because they're Muslims, but because their countries are in, 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 in f their failed states. And we have no, uh, they don't have reliable systems by which we can right now depend on their, uh, on their information to us. In national news, the Senate confirmed Betsy DeVos as the country's 11th Secretary of Education. The vote was split in the Senate and was decided by Vice President Pence. It was the first time a cabinet nominee was confirmed in a tiebreaker vote. DeVos's Indiana ties gave her support throughout her nomination. Today, Governor Eric Holcomb released a statement saying DeVos has been a, quote, dedicated champion of student achievement. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer had this to say this afternoon. The Vice President had a big day on Capitol Hill where he cast a historic deciding vote for Secretary of Edu Education Betsy DeVos. The President believes strongly that our nation's success depends on education of our students and Betsy DeVos has devoted nearly three decades of her time and talent to promoting educational opportunity. This was one of the most contentious nominations by President Trump. The rest of his cabinet is expected to be confirmed. A nearly three-year-long case against Vice President Mike Pence might make its way to the Supreme Court. According to the Star Press, in December of 2014, William Groth filed a request under the Indiana Access to Public Records Act. Groth was looking for documents related to his decision to hire outside counsel in the lawsuit against the state. The document Groth got were heavily redacted, though. 
The redacted information could reveal political strategies Pence and other governors revised against former President Obama. Groth filed a petition to have the case heard in the Indiana Supreme Court. Ball State students and staff received an email today warning them about fraudulent emails. The emails appear to be coming from university officials, including the president and other administrators. The emails included a PDF file encouraging students to open it and provide a password. Information Security Services have advised BSU users to delete the email and to use caution when handling emails that appear to be suspicious. A student-run magazine at Ball State is set to release a new edition this April. We are joined by Alex Kincaid, the editor-in-chief of Ball Bearings. Each semester, Ball Bearings focuses on a different theme. Alex, can you tell us what we can expect from the magazine this semester? Yeah, so this semester we're really taking a look at how our digital world has transformed all aspects of our lives from communication to the way we work, the way we date, the way we experience life and death, and really what that means for us. We'll be publishing four online editions this semester, which will be available at the beginning of each month. And those will focus on topics like communication, the psychology behind our online personas, and also the real life effects of what we do online. Our print magazine will be available on April 3rd around campus, and the cover story for that is actually going to look at um, how social media is impacting us from birth to death. Facebook is essentially the new baby book today, and kids are born with digital footprints that they didn't create or even ask for. Um, social media is also changing the way we interact with really tough subjects such as death. You've probably seen this play out in either memorialized Facebook accounts or messages that people post to loved ones who have passed on. The print magazine will also talk about subjects like artificial intelligence, media literacy, and also the history of the internet and its socio-political uh, significance at various points in time to really show the progression of where we started and where we are today. Very interesting and it's easy to see that uh, that even affects us right here at NewsLink Indiana, having the iPads unlike print scripts mm -hmm. like it used to be. It affects us here just like everybody else. Yes. So, thank you very much, Alex. You can find Ball Bearings on stands April 3rd or go to ballbearingsmag.com for monthly online issues. And it has been very strange weather here lately, back and forth with cold and warm. Chelsea, what can you tell us? Yeah, we had a uh, Spring-like conditions for today, temperatures in the 60s, 63 for Muncie was the today's high, 61 in Annapolis, and this is about 25 degrees warmer than average, and this is the beginning of February. Currently in, Tim uh, in Muncie, we still have temperatures that are mild, 52 degrees, winds from the west at 16 miles per hour. We do have winter weather coming tomorrow, so cold temperatures and snow showers for tomorrow. But if you're liking this warm weather we've been having, I'll let you know when that warm weather will come back in my full news weather in my full weather. Thank you, Chelsea. Well, coming up, Newslink has more on the multiple drug overdoses that occurred in Muncie this weekend. And Indiana University is under scrutiny for racist flyers posted around their campus. All this and more when we return. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. 
the little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back. Muncie police have found a recent spike in heroin overdose deaths. They say the spike could be due to a bad batch of heroin out in the market. Max Lewis is live at City Hall with more. Max? Yeah, Val and Alex, there were 13 overdoses just this past weekend, and Muncie police say that there were also three heroin overdose-related deaths. Now, Muncie Police Chief Joe Winkle says that they typically see a spike in heroin overdoses when a new batch is introduced into the market, typically from other drugs being mixed in, making it that much more lethal. Now, Sheriff Ray Dudley says that Muncie is not alone in this. He has been talking to his counterparts in surrounding counties, and they said they have all seen spikes in heroin overdoses. Now, Jason Rogers, or Rogers, who is the director of EMS services here in Delaware County, says that between February 1st and February 5th, EMS officials had to um, administer 21 doses of Narcan. Now, Narcan is a drug that is used to counteract the effects of heroin overdoses. Now, Muncie police and Delaware County prosecutors say that they will be meeting within the next week or two to discuss ways to deal with the recent spike in heroin overdoses. In downtown Muncie, Max Lewis, Newslink, Indiana. Thank you, Max. Newslink, Indiana will have more on the story as it develops. Indiana University is working with the FBI to find those responsible for posting racist flyers across the university's Bloomington campus. Provo Provost Lauren Roble released a statement today saying the flyers were found on office doors of, quote, faculty members of color or scholars of race and ethnicity. Robel says the flyers were designed to intimidate and provoke anger, adding that the school, quote, rejects all forms of racism, bigotry, and discrimination. The offense is attributed to a group promoting white supremacy, but no suspects have been identified at this time. Audience last night at Proust last, uh, were left laughing about an unlikely topic. Comedian W. Kamau Bell spoke to the packed crowd about race and its impact on American culture. Newslink's Taylor Kelly has more on the story. Critically acclaimed sociopolitical comedian Kamau Bell spoke yesterday about how to end racism in about an hour. Students, faculty, and guests gathered at Proust Hall to hear Bell address racism, sports and its relation to politics, representation, and more. Bell hosts the Emmy Award-nominated CNN documentary series, United Shades of America. He also co-hosts two podcasts, Denzel Washington is the Greatest Actor of All Time, period, and Politically Reactive. Bell's unique approach to the topics of diversity and racism leave the audience laughing and entertained. He says, these are discussions we should be having. Bell discusses the Black Lives Matter movement and how it was originated. It's about a bunch of organizations coming together to create justice. This event was sponsored by Living Learning Communities, Housing and Residence Life, Multicultural Center, and Excellence in Leadership. Excellence in Leadership graduate assistant Julianne Keza says it's an interesting topic in the college setting. A lot of our students are ready to be activists and this might um, either provoke their thoughts or get them excited about the idea of spreading the word, so um, it's just a good educational opportunity for everybody. Bell encourages the audience to know our history and how the government thinks about us. He says to think about ways you can encourage people about less racism. In Muncie, Taylor Kelly, Newslink, Indiana. Thank you, Taylor. Now, I don't know about you, Alex, but I'm kind of getting sick of this crazy weather. Like, I love the warm and everything, but it's just throwing me off a bit. That's right. Let's see what we have in store with Chelsea. Well, the spring-like temperatures will turn into winter weather tomorrow with cold temperatures and snow showers returning. And then for this weekend, we'll see these warm temperatures return for us, and I'll have more information in my full weather. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. 
And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Please, is everybody. The Battle of I-69. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Welcome back. Now we're going to take another look at weather. Chelsea, what can you tell us about the upcoming week? Well, our spring-like temperatures today and our conditions brought thunderstorms across in Indiana. And But right now, uh, looking at our current radar, we have no thunderstorms right now and we have cloudy skies. Taking a look at our current temperatures, temperatures are still pretty mild at 52 degrees, but pretty windy from the west at 16 miles per hour. We'll keep these uh, cloudy conditions right now, and then as we head on into the evening, temperatures will start to cool back down to the 30s. Taking a look at our current conditions around the state, we're still fairly mild. We have 52 degrees in Muncie, 51 in Indianapolis, and 51 in Bloomington as well. But we're starting to see this cold front starting to push its way through Indiana, as we can see with the blue temperatures back here with Kokomo 47, Lafayette 45. So temperatures are only going to get colder as we head into tomorrow. This is the temperatures for tomorrow. 36 for the afternoon high in Indianapolis, up to 35 in Muncie. And as we head into the evening, it will continue to get colder down to 27. Taking a look at tonight, we're going to have overcast skies, and that's going to continue to move on through. And then as we head into tomorrow morning for your morning commute, we're going to have overcast skies, and that's going to continue throughout the day until around 2 o'clock. That's when the snow is going to start to move in, and that's going to stay persistent with us for your evening commute. So when you're headed home from work, you might have some slippery roads, and also your visibility may be reduced as well. Looking at our snow, uh, accumulation we may have about half an inch maybe even up to two inches tomorrow taking a look at tonight's forecast 35 will be our low with isolated showers possibly throughout the night but mostly cloudy skies with the winds from the west at 15 to 25 miles per hour Looking at tomorrow, high of 36 with afternoon sh uh, snow and then as our winds will be from the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour Taking a look, if you're going to the women's basketball game tomorrow night, temperatures will be in the 30s, but you're going to be facing some of the snow showers. And so make sure you are bundled up if you're headed outside. Winds will be from the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And our seven-day forecast, we'll have snow tomorrow and still chilly on Thursday, 24 degrees. But take a look, back up into the 40. 40s for Friday and then into the 50s for this weekend and then we may see some um, rain chances for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday will be in the evening and then for Monday and Tuesday we'll have some sunny skies. Thank you Chelsea. What's going on in sports tonight Devin? Well our men's basketball team is in Akron taking on the Zips and our men's volleyball team is facing off against Fort Wayne Mastodons. All of this and more when we come back. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. 
Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little. But things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. But don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. And welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Devin Tarr with tonight's sports. Ball State's men volleyball team took on in-state rival Fort Wayne tonight in, the, in Muncie for the first game of a two-game series. The 9-2 Cardinals are coming off a three-set sweep of the McKendree Bearcats. Ball State and IPFW battling in the I-69 battle tonight in Worthen Arena. In the first set, Matt Walsh gets things going for the Cardinals as he spikes the ball, making the score 9-4. Now in the second set, Cards looking to set up an attack and continue their success, Gross finds Serene for the kill from the back line to tie it up once again. Anthony Liebrich looking to join in on the fun, elevates to kill the ball in the second set. And now we go live to Sam Matlin in Northern Arena. Sam? The battle of I-69 has begun. The Cardinals took a tough loss last week against number one seed Ohio State University but came out on top tonight against Fort Wayne, beating them in three sets. The first set, they crushed them by 11 points, and the second set, they won by five. Fort Wayne, they won by six. Fort Wayne, they won by six. Fort Wayne, Ball State men's basketball team was looking to bounce back tonight after a tough loss against Buffalo. The Cardinals took on the blazing hot Akron Zips, a team that has won 12 of its last 13 games. The 6'6 senior Frank House led the way for the Cardinals in the first half with seven points on three of five shooting. Nine minutes into the first half, House takes the pass from Tyler Persons, drives and powers it to the rim, 4-2. Akron still up 19-17. Next possession for Ball State, down by two. House sets a high screen for Ryan Weber, who finds the big guy on the perimeter. House splashes it home to put the Cardinals up by one. Later in the half, both teams fighting for the ball and Jamon Ivey comes away with the loose ball. Collects, shoots over Trey Moses and puts the zips back on top by two. Akron would go on to win this 65-63, to picking up its 20th win on the season while Ball State falls to 15-9. The women's basketball team is set to play Bowling Green tomorrow in Worthen Arena. Ball State is looking to pick up their third straight win after a 21-point victory over Miami of Ohio. After a two-game road trip, the Cardinals are back in Muncie and ready to, to defend home court. Newslink Indiana caught up with G S senior Jill Morrison, who stressed the importance of tomorrow's game. It's really important to take care of the games like on your home floor because, you know, like definitely home court advantage and you want to win every one that you can at home and um, it's just part of taking care of your business and then like getting things done on the road as well. So guys, tomorrow's 7 o'clock tip-off starts the first of two home games for the Cardinals. Just one game out of the Mac West lead from Northern Illinois. Down the stretch with only seven games left, let's hope they can pick up some big wins. Yes, definitely. 
Absolutely. And uh, what were you seeing from uh, Ball State tonight, taking on the nearly undefeated Akron? Uh, were we seeing some good things for them tonight, some promise? Yeah, definitely some good ball movement. We stayed in there, almost won. In the last seconds, we kind of fell apart, but we showed that we, were, we are a good team and we can come away with the conference title. All right, looking for a great close to the season. Yes, thank you, Devin. Up next, find out who will perform alongside Lady Gaga this weekend. And Jake Gyllenhaal can sing. Your entertainment news is next. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Anywhere? Other notable credits Does it go anywhere where he's away from the shop so we can mic him up? Hatch is survived by his son, Paul Michael Hatch. Tell him when to do it. This has been a big week for Lady Gaga. After performing in the Super Bowl halftime show Sunday, Gaga has even more exciting news for her fans. Today it was announced that Mother Monster herself will be performing alongside Metallica. Jake Gyllenhaal shows off his singing chops in a new video that was released earlier today. Gyllenhaal will make his Broadway de debut in the revival of Sunday in the Park with George, which will begin preview February 23rd. A recording of him rehearsing for the show made its way to the internet today, where he shows off some serious pipes. Let's take a listen. When the woman that you wanted goes, you can say to yourself, when I give what I give, but the woman who won't wait for you knows that however you live, there's a part of you always. Thank you, Parker and Alex. Now, Chelsea, how about that last look at weather? Well, we're going to see snow for tomorrow, and colder temperatures will last for Thursday, but warmer temperatures will return for us this weekend, and possibly some rain chances for Saturday and Sunday. And next week, looks like we're going to have some sunny skies. Awesome. Thank you, Chelsea. That's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.